Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm sharing with you 8 style mistakes that I've made in the past and that I've now fixed. So as a content creator, I create 5, 10, 20 outfits sometimes in a day and there are definitely some mistakes in there so I wanted to break it down a little bit and share a few of my tips on what kind of mistakes to avoid. I use the word mistake, however these are just the outfits that I haven't felt personally great in they don't really reflect my style or my taste, and hence it was a mistake for me. However, this is going to look a little bit different for everyone, and we all have different preferences, and I think that's what makes things interesting. My very first style mistake is going a little bit overboard with the oversized silhouettes and clothing. I wanted to specifically refer to a couple of outfits I wore with my Uniqlo jeans, and these are like a wide-legged Uniqlo cropped denim. And while I love them because they're comfortable, I like the silhouette, I started to pair these jeans with all of my clothing and that is where the mistake is. With these jeans, because they are cropped and also quite short, I think that they can look really nice paired with a more fitted top and I still love to wear them like this. However, because I started to wear them with everything in my wardrobe, I started to mix in a lot of more voluminous tops or more boxy shapes on the top and by doing that it just started to look very frumpy very fast. With the two outfits that I'm referring to, these are all taken from my Instagram, you can see that it's just not a good silhouette, it doesn't look flattering at all and these are outfits that I will no longer be wearing going forward. Another fix that I like to do when I'm wearing a very boxy outfit is to go for a nude sandal. And you guys, if you watch my videos, you'll know that I reach for a nude sandal all the time with a block heel. And that is just because it really helps balance a more boxy kind of silhouette. And it does lengthen the leg, make me look taller, and I think it compensates a little bit for the boxiness of some of my outfits. And the last thing that I also like to do is to combine it with more dainty jewellery. I find that the daintiness of the jewellery helps soften the oversized silhouettes. And that's another great option to reach for. Looking at the mistakes in this photo kind of bring me on to my next point, which is not reaching for the right shoe. And we all know shoes can make or break an outfit, and it just is really important to factor it in when you're getting ready for the day. What I used to do is that there'll be the last thing I think about as I run out the house, and sometimes I'll just end up with a shoe that doesn't match the outfit at all. So the fix for this is simple, it's just a matter of thinking about the shoe when you're putting together the outfit, and I've actually brought my shoes up closer to my wardrobe so that I can kind of put outfits together and look at them in the mirror when I'm getting ready in the morning. Another mistake that happens is that I won't factor in how much walking I'm going to do in a day. Shoes are a very practical item and you have to be comfortable so sometimes I'll come up with an outfit that doesn't really match sneakers but have to wear sneakers because I'm walking a lot that day and then the outfit also ends up looking a little bit mismatched. So on days where I'm doing a lot of walking, I like to start with my sneaker first and then work backwards to create my outfit. In the cutaways, I really want to show what a difference shoes can make and I feel like one of the best ways to show that is with my Levi's high loose jeans. I love these jeans and wide legged jeans are super trendy right now but they definitely don't work with every shoe. If I wore it with flats or if I wore it with a sneaker, they honestly look pretty terrible. Whereas if I wear it with a nude block heel, I feel like it looks quite chic and a lot more flattering. My first style mistake is not paying enough attention to the details when it came to my outfits. So I used to be really into recreating minimal street style looks. And to be honest, I still am. The outfits that are super minimal, but also super chic. I think I purchased something like a white shirt and a pair of skinny jeans which are considered pretty basic items in a wardrobe and when I put them on, I just never felt 100%. Now I know why, which is that I really didn't think about the fabric, didn't think about the fit of these clothing and because of that, they were nice outfits, I mean they were okay, a bit boring but they really weren't the kind of chic and elevated look that I wanted to go for. So the fix here is very simple, it's just about paying attention to the fabric and the fit of clothing. With fabric, I always like to think about purchasing something high quality, but also having something suit our lifestyle and where we want to wear it. If I'm looking for an office shirt, one of my favourite materials is a viscose, 
because it doesn't wrinkle. If I'm sitting with my back against a chair all day, it still looks perfectly pressed at the end of the day. In an office, I'm also probably in aircon all day, so I don't need it to be as breathable as if I was to wear it on the weekend as I'm out and about. And if I'm wearing something casually, I might go for linen because it is the most comfortable and the most breathable option for me. So it just kind of goes to show that where you want to wear this shirt and your lifestyle plays a huge part in the type of fabric that works best for it. Another thing I like to think about is how I'm going to wear a particular piece. So going back to the shirt example, if I was going to tuck it in all the time, one of the things that I'll be paying attention to is how the fabric drapes because I wanted to tuck in nicely and look very kind of smooth. Whereas if I didn't care about that, I might go for a cotton poplin that looks very nice and structured instead. When it comes to the fit of clothing, this one's pretty simple. Make sure everything fits well, not too tight, not too loose, the right length. A lot of the guides I used to read talked about wearing skinny jeans because they were all the rage back then, but I never loved skinny jeans for my own style. And if I was to do it again, I would definitely have gotten myself a pair of straight leg jeans then because I just feel so much more confident and myself in straight leg jeans versus skinny jeans. I think it's really important when it comes to basics to not be swayed too much by the trends and to really go for something that is a silhouette you like. The fourth style mistake I made is that I stopped experimenting with my style because I wanted to fit into that very minimal look. And this was such a mistake because I feel like my style just got quite boring during that phase because I wasn't doing that much accessorizing. I wasn't playing around with different styles anymore. I was just kind of reaching for the same kind of things all the time. And it was only when I started experimenting again, I just figured out that this type of minimal straight look is not for me. It doesn't make me feel great. It wasn't really my style. And I kind of moved past that to guess what my style is now. I want to refer back to the three photos I showed earlier of the street style outfits. And in the first outfit, she's wearing a pair of really chunky sneakers that give the outfit a little bit of a twist. It makes the basic look a bit more experimental because the chunky sneaker is something that is a little bit more trendy. In the second outfit, the girl has a really cool bag and I think it gives the outfit such an interesting twist and it really elevates the look. And in the third outfit, the bag has a really nice clasp to it, which is just a little bit of detail. And the shoes are quite strappy, which just adds something more interesting to a simple outfit. So in all of these looks, I feel like there is a little bit of experimenting going on. And there is something that kind of draws your eye, catches your attention to make these outfits interesting. So the mistake I made is that I went overboard with the minimal looks and stopped kind of injecting that personal style and flair into outfits. I am going to show you one photo from a while ago that I really like. I have a white sweater tucked into a pair of black pants. It's quite a boxy outfit, but I really like the accessories that I wore in this outfit. It's quite hard to see, but with the earrings, it's a pearl earring that has like a floral kind of bead at the back, which just was really pretty. I like the long lariat necklace and it's got a little pearl dangling. And also, of course, I've got a pop of color bag with a nice chain strap that I think just adds as a really nice accent to a simple outfit. So this is an outfit that feels like something I would still wear and I love all the accessories going on. With this mistake, I think that it is also possible to do the opposite where you accessorize too much in which case I think the rule of taking one thing off before you leave the house applies. But for me at that stage in my life, I really needed to kind of add on a bit more accessories to keep my outfits interesting. In my next style mistake, I wanted to talk about mixing the wrong colors together. So this is sparked by an outfit I saw on my Instagram feed that I really just did not understand. And this was right after lockdown last year and I think I was just a bit confused about how to put together an outfit. I wore a grey sweater with a brown cardigan over the top and this is all layered over a red dress and I have a dark purple test bag. This is a pretty awful outfit um, because none of the colours match and it's not mismatched in a nice way, it's just kind of mismatched. I think because the cardigan is brown and has a little bit more of a neutral warm tone, it really doesn't match the coolness of that grey cardigan. And then the red is also maybe a little bit more on the warm side. So this outfit just kind of fell apart. So the simple fix to this is when in doubt, just match cool tones together 
and warm tones together. And if you obviously feel very comfortable with colour, you can experiment more. But when in doubt, I feel like this is a pretty safe option. Another rule that I could have definitely embraced when putting together this outfit is to stick to three colours. I feel like there are just way too many colours that don't match in this outfit. And three colours would definitely have helped instead of the five that I went for. If you guys want to know how to wear colour the right way, I did an entire video on how to wear colour and how to inject colour into your wardrobe. And I'm going to link the video above. I think that video gives a lot more useful tips on how to pair different colours together um, to fix up this terrible, terrible outfit I have on here. Style mistake number six is wearing an entirely new outfit, so from head to toe, wearing new pieces. I definitely think that when a new piece comes into our wardrobe, it takes us a while to figure out how to style it. And I feel like the safest way to go is to kind of combine new pieces with the things that we already like to wear and know how to style. So by mixing new and old, there's less room for error. Case in point, this photo that I have up on the screen is something that I wore a couple of years ago and it is the reason why I now do this. So firstly, the leopard print dress is a very loud piece. If I was to wear it now, which I, to be honest, I probably wouldn't, I would wear it with very simple accessories, such as like new sandal, very, very simple bag to tone it down. And with the shoes, they are so trendy. It's the kind of shoe I would wear with a simple white dress, simple black dress, to add a bit of detail into the outfit. So the shoe I think looks quite cute, just not with this outfit that is already super, super loud. It seems obvious now this is a mistake, but I've definitely got it into the habit of making sure that with new pieces, I pair it with my basics, with my pieces that I feel really comfortable wearing to ensure I minimize outfits like this. That is just a big mess. You'll see in the cutaways some of my newer pieces styled with older pieces. And this is just to make sure there's smaller room for error. And so I don't repeat outfits like this leopard print dress and sandal combination that I wore in the past. Onto style mistake number seven, and that is wearing items that don't suit us. We're going to bring back the leopard print again because I had seen leopard print a lot on some of my favorite bloggers. I think the person I saw it on a lot was the Anna edit. And she looks so good in leopard print. I love all her outfits with leopard print. So I decided to dabble myself in this print. This was a huge mistake for me because as much as I absolutely love Anna's style, her style is a lot more minimal. So the leopard print works really nicely with her wardrobe. My wardrobe on the other hand is not that minimal. I love more girly pieces paired with minimal options and leopard print just doesn't work. It's something I can appreciate on other people, but when I wear it, I don't feel that good in leopard print, and it also doesn't match with my existing wardrobe. Since um, those few weeks of really going wild for leopard print, unfortunately, I have now let go of those things, and it's just not a print I will be dabbling in in the future. Well, never say never, but Honestly, animal print, I think, is just not going to be for me. If I was to experiment with another print like this in the future, what I think I did right is this Cezanne skirt. This Cezanne skirt is in a really muted color palette. I can style it with some basic pieces that I feel comfortable in to keep it in line with my personal style. For me, this outfit is the right way to try out a new print or a new style compared to the earlier outfit. My very last style mistake is styling an oversized dress the wrong way. So I'm going to refer back to um, this very oversized printed dress from Ghani a few years ago. With this dress, I didn't love the look of it, but there are definitely ways I could have styled it better. Because this dress is quite long and because it's got long sleeves as well and kind of covers a lot of my skin, I find that what I really needed to do was create a bit more balance by keeping everything else very light and dainty. I feel like the bucket bag that I styled with it is a little bit harsh. There is a little bit of black in the print, but I still feel like the bag is a bit harsh. And it's actually a little bit too big to be worn crossbody with this outfit. So I would definitely opt for a smaller bag in a more neutral tone to match this outfit. With my shoes, you probably guessed it, I wouldn't go for something so flat because it creates a bit of heaviness at the bottom. I would go for a little bit of a block heel 
and I think that it would kind of elevate this look a little bit more. With my sleeves, if I could, I would love to have rolled them up a little bit. I think with this particular silhouette, it was a bit hard because there wasn't much elastic in the in the cuff, but ideally I could bring the sleeves up a little bit and I think it would make the outfit much cuter. So I'm gonna show you a few more of my oversized dresses and show you how I would style it to make it more flattering. So those are my eight style mistakes that I have made and as much as these outfits do make me cringe, I definitely do feel like it's through these style mistakes that I've really been able to elevate my style just by figuring out what works and what doesn't work. I have shared a lot of very bad outfits with you guys, so please feel free to tell me what your worst outfit is or what some of the style mistakes you've made are. And once again, as I said at the beginning, what is a style mistake for me might work really well for someone else and vice versa. So it really is all about personal style. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you next week. Bye.